criminal cases in connection to the attack on the U.S. Capitol, and later how state officials in Georgia are trying to undo the damage caused by President Trump's election lies. It's Wednesday, January 13th. TV producer Shonda Rhimes is 51 years old today. The news is next. Live from NPR News, I'm Corva Coleman. The House of Representatives is scheduled to take up an article of impeachment against President Trump this morning. Lawmakers are trying to force the president from office, saying he incited last week's deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol. Separately, the House passed a resolution last night urging Vice President Pence to invoke the Constitution's 25th Amendment to remove President Trump from office. But NPR's Miles Parks reports that effort is moot. Despite the House resolution, Pence says he doesn't intend to use the 25th Amendment. So today, the House will move forward with impeachment proceedings. The vote to formally impeach Trump for the second time in less than 13 months is expected to pass with a bipartisan majority. House Democrats seem to unanimously support impeachment, and a number of Republicans also say they plan to support it. NPR's Miles Parks reporting. One Republican who supports impeachment is Wyoming Representative Liz Cheney. She's the third most senior Republican in the House. Cheney says President Trump betrayed his office and his oath to the Constitution. Video website YouTube has suspended President Trump's channel for at least a week. YouTube is owned by Google. NPR's Shannon Bond reports it's under pressure to act following the deadly riot at the Capitol. YouTube removed a new video uploaded to President Trump's channel on Tuesday, saying it broke its rules against inciting violence. The removal counts as a strike against the channel and means the president cannot upload new videos or live streams for at least seven days. Accounts that receive three strikes within 90 days get permanently banned. Google-owned YouTube has been criticized for not acting more quickly to restrict the president, who used social media to encourage his supporters to go to the Capitol last week. Twitter banned Trump from its platform, and Facebook indefinitely suspended him. YouTube has also indefinitely disabled comments on Trump's channel. Google and Facebook are among NPR's financial supporters. Shannon Bond, NPR News. Whistleblowers at the Census Bureau say the Bureau's director is trying to rush out a report about non-citizens before the end of the Trump administration. NPR's Hansi Lo Wong reports. According to a memo by the Commerce Department Inspector General, Census Bureau Director Stephen Dillingham is directing a data report about unauthorized immigrants and other non-citizens to be a, quote, number one priority. It's not clear what Trump officials plan to do with this report. President Trump is not expected to be able to carry out a plan to exclude unauthorized immigrants. The numbers that the Constitution says must include the whole number of persons in each state. Trump has put out an executive order that says a count of non-citizens could be used to evaluate proposals to change who is eligible for public benefits and how immigration laws are enforced. Hansi Luang, NPR News, New York. You're listening to NPR News. This is WLRN News. I'm Christine DiMatte. Residents and staff of assisted living facilities are supposed to be at the front of the line for COVID-19 vaccines in Florida. Many of them are still waiting. As WLRN's Wilkin Brutus reports, the wait is over for one facility in Palm Beach County. Residents at the Grand Villa of Delray Beach East, as old as 102, say they are looking forward to a drop in their anxiety levels. That's what they've been telling Marty Katz. He's executive director of the senior community. Katz says CVS pharmacists are going to come into the facility to administer doses of the Pfizer vaccine to most of the 200 plus residents and employees. They're telling us they can do up to 10 shots an hour. They come in at 11 um, in the morning, and they're scheduled to be here through 5 in the afternoon. So in a six-hour time period, they can do probably 60 or more. One of the most challenging aspects of the vaccination effort is meeting the specific needs of residents in the busy Alzheimer's and dementia care programs. We're trying to make sure they're... Um, following PPE guidelines and CDC guidelines. That's really hard with memory care folks. And, you know, trying to keep a mask on them is, is very, very difficult. CVS is scheduled to vaccinate people at all three Grand Villa locations in Palm Beach County beginning Friday. About 40% of COVID-19 deaths in Florida have been linked to long-term care facilities. I'm Wilkin Brutus in Palm Beach County. 
27 more public stores in Florida will administer the COVID-19 vaccine, but South Florida locations are still not on that list. Yesterday, Governor Ron DeSantis announced that the additional public's vaccine sites will be located in five panhandle counties. This comes a week after the grocery store giant started its vaccine pilot program with 22 stores in central and southwestern Florida counties. Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties, the three southeastern Florida counties that have the most coronavirus cases in the state, are still not part of the public's program. For more about where in South Florida you can get your vaccine and where you can get tested, please visit our live blog at WLRN.org. This is WLRN News. I'm Christine DiMatte. Memorial Cardiac and Vascular Institute is a Florida leader in heart surgery, consistently ranked among the nation's elite heart surgery programs. For more than 10 years, Memorial has achieved high ratings for cardiac surgery from the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. Dedicated to quality and patient safety, Memorial's team of leading cardiac surgeons and physicians invites you to find a heart specialist at mhs.net slash heart. We're funded by our members and by Vermont and Marino PA. Celebrating 25 years of helping individuals and corporations in coverage and disputes with their insurance companies. Learn more at vpm-legal.com. Good morning. Coming up in just a moment on Morning Edition, election officials in Georgia say the president's baseless claims about voter fraud have had an impact. We'll hear about efforts to the confidence of Georgia voters. And some rain moving through in South Florida. More details coming up. Support for NPR.